Friends, it's Wednesday, March 30, 2022. I've got my tea. I hope you got your tea or coffee. We are going to jump into our scripture for today. And I'm going to pair Revelation 25, verse 8. We've been reading verses 6 and 7, Monday and Tuesday, verse 8 here. Uh, and, and it goes like this. We're going to pair it with Revelation in a moment. But here we go. Isaiah 25, 8. God will swallow up death forever. Wow. A world without death. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all the faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from the earth for the Lord has spoken. There's nothing more in way, more of a reduction, more undignified than death, right? It is a terrible process. And I have... Um, often held in my hands the, the human remains of a, of, of a parishioner. I've held a box that contained the ashes, and I've said the words from the old Anglican prayer service for the dead, um, a, a, a service that witnesses to the resurrection, but it also faces death, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It's amazing to think of a living person, a person who talked, who had friends, who maybe had a family, person who had talents, who could, who could make a violin sing, or who could uh, solve a business problem, or, or uh, who, who could create a piece of art, or had the gift of gab, who could tell a funny story. A person in whom there was life and connections reduced to a box. I mean, it's an indignity. And yet Isaiah can picture a situation where we're never standing there holding the box. Uh, we're never... Uh, facing the indignity of death and the reduction that comes with it. Now, there's another voice in the Bible that speaks similarly, and it's the voice of uh, the John, the Apostle John, the uh, member of Jesus' group of 12, John, who, who unlike the, many of the other disciples, got to be a very old man. He lived in his 90s, and he uh, was much revered because um, he was he was the last surviving member of that that special group and they have a special role because they were the eyewitnesses to many of the things that Jesus did and some of the things he shared he shared with them and not with the broader uh, world um, although there's nothing inconsistent between what he told the disciples and what he did in his public teaching nevertheless they're a precious resource of of the only eyewitnesses that wrote down what they what they saw and the teaching of Jesus are our, our, our disciples, and he was one of them. And he wrote First, um, Second, and Third John, but also Revelation. And in Revelation, in the second last chapter of the Bible, he says this: See if you can catch a similarity. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, "See, the home of God is with mortals, men and women." He will dwell with them and they with him. They will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Did you catch it? He wipe away every tear from their eyes. That's an echo of Isaiah 25. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. The first things have passed away. Isaiah wanted this world. He was desperate to see it. He saw the rise of, of the Assyrians during his period between 740 and uh, the, the beginning of his time in 740 when he started prophesying to 700 was a crucial time in the world and the, the Babylonians were also, or the Egyptians were also rising up. But the Assyrians were the power in this area and they were a cruel and a fierce fighting people. I mean, they, they took no quarter, they had no mercy. And so they attacked the 10 tribes, uh, who uh, Israelite tribes who lived in the northern part of Israel, sometimes called Samaria. And so that was the majority of the Israelite population, these 10 tribes. And there were two tribes that were down near uh, Jerusalem. You know, and that area is often called Judah. The Assyrians in 722 attacked and destroyed Samaria. They, they dispersed, they ran off all the people that they didn't kill in every different direction. And they were dispersed, and those tribes never reformed. They just went out of existence. They're called the lost tribes of Israel because no one knows where they went or what happened to them. Uh, it's just a terrible instance, and, and Isaiah had to see that, and yet he had this amazing hope 
that there would come an era when God, by his miraculous power, would create a situation where there was no more mourning or crying. There was, there was just renewal and blessing and celebration and joy. Well, the thing is that John, the eyewitness, he got to see the resurrection of Jesus. He got to see Jesus exercise his powers. We talked about yesterday, raising the, the, the dead son of the widow of Nain uh, and the little girl who had died, uh, who was connected with the centurion and Lazarus, who uh, another great story in, in John's gospel in, in chapter 11, who, um, where, where Lazarus is, is in the gra grave for three days and he's called forth. They got to see this miraculous power, and then they got to understand that through the resurrection of Jesus, that the power of God's resurrection could live in us, a death-defying power, that we could become the children of a new reality. It's as if, it's as if the human race was literally reborn, recreated, because the, the life of God, which isn't just regular life, it's not just bios, it's Zoe, it's an unending life. It's a full life, that that life could come and, and inhabit us, that God could be with us. And so at the conclusion of the book of Revelation, which certainly has a lot of material about judgment, you get this incredible picture that God and his people are going to be together. He's going to dwell with them and there will be no more mourning or crying or tears. What a picture. What a promise. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus does not just comfort us with a fond hope. He doesn't just, even like Isaiah, have a strong hope of something that will just happen in the future that we, we can't experience. But Jesus actually brought that power into history and showed us how it works, uh, it, how he can mysteriously undo death and reverse uh, the processes of decay and disintegration and, and bring fresh new life. Amazing. So his promises sound different to us. And his talk about a feast that is coming in the kingdom where many will come from the east and the west and the north and the south uh, to sit at table together as part of God's people to celebrate uh, connection and community and love and goodness and grace and God. Uh, the promise of that sounds different from him because of who he is. In him and through him, death is indeed swallowed up forever. Let's, uh, let's take a moment to uh, praise God for this incredible reality. Hallelujah and amen.